What's up, my Flatland Rider buddies? This is Jean-William Prévost. My friends call me Dub. I run Iggy Flat BMX, IGI BMX, Iggy, I got it. You know what it is. I'm here today. Outside is snowing like crazy. I think we got like two feet of snow today. Um, what a winter, man. It is something else. These days are not what it used to be. You know what it is. Uh, especially from traveling. Like I remember last year at this time of the year, it was like just coming out of Chimera Games and training, looking forward for the Toronto contest, which is usually like kind of the kickoff of the season for me and for a couple other guys. And uh, yeah, it's canceled this year. I just got the news from Jamie recently, uh, a couple of weeks back. So um, the Toronto International Bike Show will not be taking place. Obviously, it seems to follow a trend these days that everything just kind of gets canceled, but we got to keep our head up, keep going, keep riding, you know, keep learning new tricks because things are definitely going to unblock at some point when the information comes out and everything comes back to some type of hopeful normal. And uh, so Toronto being canceled is kind of a bummer. I, w I was kind of hoping, wishing that it would take place, but it didn't. It seems like the future of Flatland is very online right now. Like a lot of it, it will be um, funneled into our devices. And I guess we're just going to spend time learning tricks in front of a tripod. Um, as it is a bit harder to get time in winter to go outside and... Uh, get people to film for you and things are just kind of creepy out there for now so uh here i am for round four of flat system i just want to talk about a couple things man some news talk about events maybe the future of flatland and what we're heading into this year and um i'd love to know what you guys think like where it's heading right now especially for flatland you can just like talk in the comments or send me a message just shoot shit with me really i'm cool with that um, I run Iggy BMX, so you can find the products on IggyBMX.com and check it, check out the catalog on, uh, Iggy Flatlog on Instagram. We'll have new things coming out very soon. I'm very excited about that. So pimp your bike this summer with some Iggy parts for sure. Um, yo, come back on. I know it's been a while already, but I want to go back on, uh, Jeep Real Games, um, how crazy that was how like well first of all like i don't know did you guys even hear about it before it took place because i was like oh what what is this contest it's taking place in japan everything's in japanese i guess it was an invitational contest i guess no information available so let's just stand by and watch and what a show it was man damn did you guys watch that I guess I was hallucinating because, like, like, I don't know, Hero came back with some second, third, fourth wind that, like, who would have thought, you know? Like, man, he's been going at it for a long time already now, man. Dude, he's killing it, man. Like, I remember reading about, like, his, um, his career back in, like, 2004 or 5 or something in the Cream magazine where he was already talking about tendonitis, like, in his, in his elbow, so... To go out and kill it like that with like that that new guard coming up, you know, uh, it is a hell of a feature. And uh, notably also what happened in round, uh, I guess it was like qualifying, I think, uh, where that kid, Yu Katagiri, did like this full bike flip. And um, like just kind of at the end of the run, you know, it just like boom like a 360 bike flip out of a peg wheelie and you're just kind of like what the hell <laughs> where did that come from you know and it seemed just dialed already so i guess these kids they got way more coming up their sleeves but then like okay you're like okay 360 bike flip is back because that trick is from i think steve Mulder, right and then in finals fucking kyo comes with the blender to bike flip and then you're like damn that just shut it down you know what i mean man i did not expect that at all you know like i like i think i said to a couple friends that week like man just like a week ago we didn't even have this concept that you could do like a 360 bike flip out of a blender 
bro you know what i mean so it was like yeah it's very palpable that there's like a rivalry over there and i heard that they come from the same uh area too so like the katagiri brothers and the, the hayakawas they come from the same area and i guess they just drink the same water and whatever's in that water is powerful man also they have a good a good scene man they're surrounded like there's a reason why the japanese scene is so strong it's not just random you know like i think about this a lot where it's like as much as i try to like put as much together here it's it's like I, it's uncomparable to what's going on over there because there's generations of bmx flatland riders that i've like worked hard on building the scene building schools um holding events brands that have been there for over 20 years you know like stuff like that that's just like not replaceable by just expecting things to come up come together on their own and and grow organically like you need to put the work and you need to make it happen so for that the schools the contests the brands the overall environment i mean even the weather they like can mostly ride most of the year usually except up north or i guess hokkaido they can't but like down in the south is tropical right like okinawa so but i don't think i think most riders come from tokyo i don't think it gets that cold except for a couple of weeks during winter not like here we got like a good six seven feet of snow this year already which is crazy but um overall that's a reason why they uh i think they get like such a such a high level it's a lot of factors together and uh i guess the pressure of having all these these riders together really pushes the sport and also having flat ground man here I, it's really hard to find any flat ground i think overall in canada you just kind of deem to ride like crooked asphalt and for some riders it's good man don't get me wrong but to me really tough to do man like i just i can't I really can't ride an asphalt floor um and they're all like drain there's drainage like there's angles and everything so it's like a tough uh tough call to just even have space here and grow so i always tell my friends like or people that look into flatland that like right like riding and making a living from bmx flatland in canada is kind of like some kind of exotic plan trying to survive in the depths of winter you know and doing my best and holding up you know we're out here um crossing our fingers for things to come back together obviously there seems to be some kind of uh agenda so we'll see how that goes and um so that's about it about about that i thought i just wanted to go back on it i thought man like dude these guys really killing it man needed to shout it out one last time but it would have been nice to hear about it see if you know or like anybody kind of is it open can people take part you know or or not but i guess we don't get that info it reminds me of those times back in like 2011 when like they had these i was in china and they had these contests sometimes and they're like they were telling us like yeah there's a contest but it's for locals only and you're like oh oh really all right what does that mean like yo i can't imagine if we did that in canada it's for locals only and i don't know it's just kind of iffy but i guess they have their reasons and phew, the results was totally worth it so there's nothing to complain about really um but there's one thing i noticed man about like the way they ran that contest compared to other uh digital contests is that uh, for example, last year there was a fees in which I took part, which was a two minute continuous run. And there was AFA, which I took, which I didn't take part in. I kind of pulled back last minute because I was like going nuts after like the, 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 the fees thing, man. Like, yo, know, it's like to, to go out there and like pull two minutes of your sickest shit back to back is like, it's got to be like the hardest thing. I like almost harder than pulling a good contest run in live just because you're living with the idea that like others could be doing their sickest shit too you know so you're like you're trying to find a way to like at least, i guess one up everybody else but you don't know what they're going to do and you don't know what they can achieve in that environment so you really want to give the best of yourself i i was driving myself crazy like i had a good result but uh i think i need a little break from that like and just spend time on my bike progressing having a good time and looking at new options instead of like funneling my energy into like repeating the same three minute run back to back so what was cool about it in japan was that they had uh yeah they they, they, they had an edit it was cut so obviously the level is going to be like tenfold better because 
like you can do a trick a 20 second trick then cut and then you could practice that one trick for as long as you want and then go on to the next trick which is going to be your second whatever sickest combo idea you had and then you can mix them up wh whichever way you want and you don't have the the restraint of having to deal with the continuous run so me i'm more into that and i thought fees was going to be like that in the beginning before it, it was announced there was a couple changes to the um, to the schedule or uh the format as it started so it was a continuous run so i'm more fond of that or even fond of like a one minute combo kind of run that's even better because three minutes man is just like bro you're spending most of the time just kind of pedaling in circles and and catching your breath trying to like you know fill in the spot somewhere in there but all formats have their benefits one of them is like the long runs is that okay like this guy is a, more of a stamina rider and then i think the one where you can cut and edit is more of like an artistic way of like presenting a run where you can actually just focus on the tricks and you don't have to like like spend half of it basically catching your breath so yeah depending on who you are i think some of it is more um apt to being a good presentation for your rider so yeah man toronto cancel uh, uh fees there's no news to this point it seems like also the latest news about uh, like Flatland was kind of on the edge or on the brink of going to the Olympics. It seemed like it was like a sport that had a chance and it was being pushed forwards by the UCI. And uh, so the official schedule came out and Flatland wasn't part, isn't taking part in the 2024 Olympics in Paris, which is kind of a bummer because that was kind of like a, like a kind of a goal setter, I think, especially for guys from the older generation like me that would like, I'm not even an older generation, but already like, I guess, uh, just a little earlier generation than what's coming up now. And especially with the new sprouts, man, these guys are sick. So that was like a goal setter to be like, yeah, I want to take part in that. It's not taking part, which makes me put everything else into question. Like, um, oh, so we're not taking part in that. Do we have a chance for 2028? Is that even something, is that even something that to be considered? I think the main reason people state usually be because like the reason we're not entering the Olympics is that um, like our, our girl class is not like populated enough. And I guess the level also needs to go up there so that it's presentable on TV and uh, such media as to make it um, interesting for the spectators that are tuning in. Um, but um what is it to be part of the UCI as well in the, the COVID era? I don't know who else got their license. I got it last year, um, but this year I don't plan on getting it. I don't see anything scheduled for now. And uh, not sure what the actual goals are and what will happen depending on what happens with uh, the whole situation. But that said, let's keep our hopes up for 2028. Yo. I'd still be down, give it a shot. I would be some little older by then, you know, like 30, 40, <laughs> like 2024, 20, 24 plus, plus three, I would be 37 plus, I would be 41 for the 2028 Olympics. Hey, if I can make it, you would just try it, you know, it's not like, <laughs> but man, this is still like a cool goal to have. And uh, I don't even know if they're going to take place this come this year for BMX Freestyle. We'll see. There seems to be like kind of like most of, like the population in Japan from what I heard is not down for it because it's just like obviously the logistical part of it is, is probably just crazy with keeping your distance and this and that. And then having people from hundreds of countries around the world flocking into your country in times when you're not supposed to be traveling so we'll see about that but uh anyways recently there was the flat matters awards and uh that was cool man i followed through i sent my votes i got some nominations i was really stoked on it i got like five and uh really want to thank everybody who voted for me i really appreciate it um i think it was kind of obvious that keo will kind of like take it all away man or most of it because He's definitely been putting out like a lot of um, like Instagram new tricks and stuff that 
it's really interesting actually stuff that like uh you would you would have thought maybe would have been a a little further down the line but he really went into that blender variation category of tricks and kind of owns it now you know i remember seeing him in like 2015 and he was doing like blenders uh upside down pedaling mega spins and he was doing like those tricks non-stop and just practicing that so like it's kind of funky how he went and made blender and upside down pedal mega spin kind of like his basic trick you know how some will use steamroller or gerator or whatever and just like boom bike flip out <laughs> thing is ridiculous but uh yeah man and uh, i wanted to shout out uh peter olsen for his uh he, he won the edit of the year for rituals uh that edit was sick man all them death truck walk arounds man like yo i look into that stuff and be like i want to try a couple because that that seems pretty cool but it really does hurt to practice those uh those tricks i don't think everybody can do the death truck tricks either yo like um they're kind of uh you need like uh long legs <laughs> but uh that brings me to think about how like what flat like what direction flatland is heading into you know there seems to be a couple guys that have like indoor spots that are really going to be able to like just keep up with like the progression for the next couple of whatever the unit of time is and um like that that'll give those people an advantage on the return obviously and then summer will come and then everybody will be able to ride but during winter time it's not easy especially for the northern hemisphere especially with like we had like minus feel like minus 30 celsius for a couple of days recently what the h bro and um so i just see it like the like flatland is heading towards like we've been all we had this the world of opportunities in flatland to go and take part and there was contests in indonesia in japan there was contests like all over the place there's riders all over the place man like there's riders in africa and a couple of countries you know like just looking at the map i see riders everywhere malaysia india has riders australia has riders china has riders canada us mexico all of so central america and south america has riders and that was kind of all accessible and ticket prices were getting a little lower and now we now that we can't travel we're kind of all funneled into like this 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 flatland of the devices you know this 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 flatland of the the instant of the moment where we don't really see many edits you know we just see people kind of like posting basically their clips the moment they i guess kind of just landed it you know and it makes me wonder like is that the future is it like there is a, a type of gratification that you feel when you post like a new trick and you you get the reaction from like the scene and like i guess that's the dopamine shot that they even explain in that that documentary there the, the social dilemma it's like uh but like is it is it what we want it to become i don't think it's a choice right now it's just like something that we have so we're, we're working w around what we have and uh but uh it seems like flatland is heading in that direction where like it's more about like feeding the followers and feeding like the the, the moment you know of of the new tricks and and kind of i guess try to enjoy the moment and, and interact with the international uh, scene and i see that as what's going on with with flatland right now because there's no other platform to really showcase it. Whoever is going to put out new contests like online, I hope they make it like edit, edit or cuts or even just one combo. So really you can take everything you really want to put out there and put it out there. I was hoping to do Pegrary and then I saw there was two contests announced like AFA was announced just before and then also the UFL by Marty, which looks pretty cool, man, because there's there's three different formats within one format. And it seems like the, the classes are full already, so it'll be exciting to watch that, definitely. So there's uh there's many things to, to at least look look into right now for Flatland, which is which is dope. I hope that most people that um you know like uh don't have an indoor spot, you know, like keep positive, keep visualizing your tricks and hopefully as soon as possible and as, as it's not gonna be cold forever, you'll be able to get back out there and uh ride flat again as soon as possible. But um, yeah, it is flatland from the world to the little screen is kind of how I see it. Um, 
one more thing is I seeing like uh, like street brands coming back into Flatland right now, and and I like I see it as a good thing, and I see it as a kind of like like uh, not a bad thing. It's obviously just a good thing, but I see it as kind of like wow, like this could easily take over Flatland quickly if it went that way. But I still think that like Flatland is based on small events, like and it's always been that, and it's been changing. It's like if we're going towards UCI ran events, if Flatland parts are all in the hands of, um, let's say, uh, like street brands. Like, what is our sport? Who sets the pulse on our sport? You know, and that's important to remember that it, it, it's going to be forever important for the grassroots events to take place. It's going to be important for the the Flatland brands and the Flatland that are Flatland brand only be supported as much as you can because they definitely put their heart into it and there isn't that many uh of them left you know to to name a few like arrays and uh heresy and uh even in canada pegasus or igi and uh even nice to see sequence come back man yo i, I was stoked to see sequence is coming back actually we're going to be making like a little project together i'm like i'm making like this stem i want to make again this this is like a, a stem that was made by luc moreau when i was like 18 and I really loved it. Like I wrote it for a while, man. And like it's got like the the flat part in the back. Like I really like that part because there's nothing to hit your knee on, really. And in front has six bolts, so it's like it's got that like new school and kind of like the six bolt old school feel, a little bit. But like I, I we're we're making another um, we're making another batch of these with sequence. So if you can look forward to this. That would be kind of cool. It looks dope. I like it. It's 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 maybe a little old school, but somewhere it's like a cool little repop, and the the reach is like as minimal as it could get, and it's really light. <clears throat> Six bolt design, but it's got like instead of having the two pinch in the back, you got the four that are are catching the the four on the the corners are catching the the back plate, and then the two in the middle are catching the like they're squeezing the bar. So basically. You can still like, you can still loosen up the back without moving the bars front and back. And this was a concept by Luc Moreau. Moreau uh, Luc made a lot of uh, like cool, innovative products back in the days here in um, Montreal. So shout out to Luc. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing this soon enough. So I hope you guys uh, cop a couple. There won't be that many. Probably just a handful. But yeah, to see like guys come back, like Aaron Frost coming back, like and 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 getting into flatland manufacturing again is cool because we kind of all a little too dependent on China, I would say right now. And it's like when things slow down with COVID, like recently, and then China shuts down and things just get backed up. Like I hear Taiwan is backed up crazy, and it's not like it, I think it's good to bring it back, like to a, a local local production and have more. I guess more efficient uh, control over what's happening. I guess especially if you if you're making it, you know, and you can you don't have as much shipping, and there's a lot to discuss, and it's easier to discuss with people that are on this side of the globe, definitely. Uh, speaking of new products, we're gonna be coming out with some new bars with homegrown. You guys just uh, keep an eye out for those, man. Um, I won't say anymore. But uh, yeah, the love handles were coming out and then there's another handlebar that's going to come out and it's all like uh, made by Elias at Homegrown BMX. So those are going to look really cool. So um, yeah, remember it's important to support the Flatland brands because uh, we do it because we really love it. We do it also because I think we see that something is missing maybe in Flatland and we want to add to it. And uh, so back to that, 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 that the, the fact that street brands are getting back into like Flatland is not, it's no surprise. Like, I mean, if you look like We The People is, is like my first bike, like We The People is coming back and sponsoring riders around the world, especially in the places where there's the most Flatland, like France, Japan, and uh, Spain are some of the places. And, uh, well, We The People has been in Flatland for a long time. It's just that they haven't put out anything in a bit. Uh, like they had the Utopia frame going, but for example, I was riding the We the People Pony back when I was uh, starting. That was like my first flatland bike, so it's no surprise. I mean, we all grow from from start from scratch, and we gotta learn from our errors and keep making products. 
definitely so but just just putting it out there that it's a good idea to when the time comes and you have a choice and you see maybe one is a little more expensive because the batches are smaller and stuff like that might be because you know they don't have the same ability to produce in big quantities and the contacts and anyways it's flatland is very small but <clears throat> that's i think what i had to say about it but um yeah so this was just kind of like an update for flat system because i like doing this i i mean if you like watching it just comment like you know subscribe leave a little message uh, and uh right now still the orders for iggy bmx you can send a email at info at .com. you can check the site i've been working on the site things are getting uh like refurbished here and there www.iggybmx.com you can check this part one to this trip we took in the Amazonas. Uh, first time we took ayahuasca, me and my friend uh, Juan who lives here now. Uh, that was part one, In Search of the Shaman. It's kind of like a nice little write-up that I made. So you can go and read part one. I'll be working on part two, putting it out as soon as I can. It's a lot of like going back and, and, and reliving those moments because there was a lot happening let's say emotionally when this stuff happens and i mean the goal is not necessarily to talk about what happens inwardly but more about like how we wanted this to happen so bad or at least i wanted this to happen so bad because i i was kind of seeking a certain kind of clarity at that point and uh made it happen anyway we pushed to the end we almost like kind of went back and did a u-turn on the project and then things just but anyways this the story is online you can go on the, the trip section on igbmx.com and click on igi amazonas part one in search of the shaman is something i wrote up i hope you guys take a moment and go read that and uh yeah, so that's about it for today. Just kind of like a little update. Yeah, I hope you guys are good. Keep keep writing flatland, you know, stay up. Things are going to change. The bet like things are going to go for the better, that's for sure. We just got to keep our minds in it. I think that our minds and the frequency we send out into the world is very important in this moment. So stay positive, keep sending love. The world needs it, the planet needs it, and that's it. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dub. I got it. See you.